Imagine this, you're on a beautiful beach on a clear evening, the calm ocean gently tugging away at your feet. If you're anything like me, watching the sunset on that expansive horizon makes you ponder about the sheer vastness of the earth and how tiny we are in comparison. It's an absolutely incredible feeling. But what if I told you there is a way to use that same mesmerizing sunset to quantify that same amazing feeling. Use it to estimate the radius of the Earth. All we're going to need is some keen observation, a little trigonometry, and lots of curiosity. Let me show you how. Welcome to the Scribbled Equation. I am Dr. Ashmeet Singh. I'm a physics professor with a PhD in theoretical physics, and I'm here to show you how physics and math are lurking in every corner of our lives, how wondrous and intriguing our universe is. All this by just scribbling a few equations. If you're new here, I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel by clicking on the bell icon below. If you're back again for more, thank you for being here. It's great to see you again. All right, back to the scribbling. Okay, back to the beach. So you're laying there, watching the sun disappear over that calm ocean. It's a beautiful view. As soon as the sun dips over the horizon, you stand up. But wait a second, the sun is back up again. Your line of sight is now from a slightly elevated vantage point and because of which the sun is now visible to you again. You observe this second sunset and carefully note the time it takes between these two sunsets. Let's say for your time and location on a given fine day, it takes about 11 seconds or so for the sun to set again. How on earth are we going to use this time interval? To estimate the radius of the Earth. Alright, like with everything, let's first create a basic model which captures the essential features of what's already going on at the beach. So here's the Earth, and here I am laying on the beach, let's call that point A for Ashmeet, and as I observe the sunset over my horizon line, the sun just going down below the horizon. The moment that happens, I stand up, so now I have a slightly higher vantage point, which I'm going to call as A prime for Ashmeet standing up. And from this higher vantage point, I now have a new horizon where my line of sight now meets the faraway Earth. Because of which the sun is now visible in my, in my field of view again. The sun keeps moving and it takes a little bit more longer for the sun to set again from my new apparent horizon. And as we discussed, it takes about 11 seconds between the first sunset when I was laying down and the second sunset, which I observe once I stand up. All right, that's the basic idea right over there. Let's mark a few more things on this diagram that are going to come in handy as we try to break away the problem into more tangible, smaller parts. So in that 11 seconds or so, the, sw the sun swept an angle, let's call that angle theta. I'm also going to mark the center of the Earth and call it O. I'm going to join the line which connects my higher vantage point to where I was laying down, all the way down to the Earth's center. I'm also going to mark the point of my new apparent horizon, I'm going to call that point as P, and I'm going to connect point P back with the center of the Earth. Now you might notice my new horizon line, my new apparent sight of line that I'm seeing over here, is tangential, is a tangent to the Earth's surface. And a tangent to the Earth's surface is going to be perpendicular, is going to make a 90 degree angle with any radius connecting any point on the, on the sphere, the circle, back with the center of the Earth. Let's take a tally of what we know and what we don't know. So first of all, there is the Earth's radius that we don't know quite yet. We are trying to find it out. In the figure, the Earth's radius is given by the length OA or the length OP, which are both Earth's radii. I'm going to mark it as capital R for the Earth's radius. Let's put that down over here. So Earth's radius OA OP is R. 
Okay, what I can probably get an estimate for is the height difference AA prime. Let me mark that as the height H. And I can probably approximate that by how tall I am, given those are the two vantage points from which I observe my two sunsets. So the height H is something that I can probably approximate based on my physical height. Of course, Earth's radius is what we want to find out, and we don't know that quite yet. I would also want to mark on this figure the length A prime P, which is this line segment right over here. And I'm going to call this D for the lack of a better variable. And taking a tally of what I know so far, the angle that the sun sweeps in those 11 seconds, I do not quite know yet. I'm going to put this here. Theta is currently unknown to me. That length A prime P, which I've been calling D so far, do I know what that is, how much or how big it is? I do not at the moment. All I can probably estimate is my height, h, and I also can measure the time interval, delta t, between my two sunsets, which I actually go and measure on the beach. So that I also have a handle on. Please also note, this figure is definitely not to scale. Not the sun, not how tall I am, not the earth, but again, the essential ideas of how different things are connected are all in the figure over here. Okay, now that we have everything we need, let's scribble a few equations and find the radius of the Earth. As you would notice, the triangle OPA prime is a right angle triangle because my line of sight is tangential to the Earth's surface and therefore makes a right angle triangle with the radius of the Earth. So in that triangle, in triangle O, P, A prime, I can use Pythagoras' theorem to basically connect the lengths of the three sides of the triangle. The longest side has a length of R plus H. Squaring that up, this must equal to the sum of squares of the other two sides which are adjacent to the right angle. And that gives me R square plus P square. Wonderful. That's the Pythagorean theorem for that right angle triangle, OPA prime. Let's open up this uh, whole square over here. So I'm going to get an R square plus H square plus a cross term, which is 2HR. And this whole thing equals the sum of squares of the other two sides of my right angle triangle. As you would notice, it looks wonderful. One R square cancels off on both sides. So I have H square plus 2HR equals d square. Before yeah. moving forward, now is a good time to see whether physical intuition can come in handy and help make our lives a little bit simpler. So on the left hand side of my problem, there are two physical scales involved. There is my height h and there is the Earth's radius r. Now one thing is for sure, however tall might I be, I am definitely going to be much much smaller than the Earth's radius. There is an inherent separation of scales involved in the problem. Separation of scales. And this lets me massively ease out and approximate my equation with something much simpler. If h is much much less than r, guess what? h squared is much much less than twice hr. Think about that. Multiply r on both sides and you can basically argue for that. And once you have this, my 8 square piece is so much smaller than the 2HR piece that this one can practically be neglected from the equation. So all I have left now, I basically have twice HR equals D squared. All right, that's looking a little bit better and a little bit nicer. But the only issue is I don't quite know what D is or do I? This is where a little trigonometry is going to come in handy. Here is our beloved angle theta, which is the angle that the sun sweeps between our two sunsets. If this angle is theta, then so is this angle, because they are both corresponding angles made by a pair of intersecting lines. Now, if this angle is theta, notice this triangle is a right angle triangle, thereby making the angle on the top to be 90 degrees minus theta. 
okay? If that angle is 90 minus theta, then in this larger triangle, the one we are considering, OPA prime, in that triangle, which is also a right angle triangle, then the angle subtended at the center of the earth also better be theta. Wonderful, isn't it? The angle that the sun sweeps between our two sunsets, it's the same angle that is now being subtended in the triangle OPA prime at the center of the earth. In the same triangle, the tan of my angle theta, tangent of the angle theta, which is given by the ratio of the perpendicular height divided by the base of the right angle triangle, in this case given by my unknown distance d divided by the Earth's radius r. So that lets me basically exchange variables d over in terms of the angle theta and the unknown radius r. So I have from here that d is r tangent of the angle theta. Once I have this, I can take this and I can plug it back in my equation up over here. And once I do it, what I get is, I'm going to come down here, so 2hr is r square tan square theta. As you would notice, one power of r cancels away. And la di da, my radius of the earth can now be isolated in terms of other measurable quantities. Twice the height that I gained once I stand up divided by the square of the tangent of the angle that the sun sweeps in that time between the first and the second sunsets. All that is left to do now is approximate h and the angle theta and we are good to go. We can basically get the radius of the earth. Now for h, I can approximate that height by how tall I am and I measured it. It comes out to be about 1.7 meters and I'm going to use that as an approximation for the height between my two vantage points when I observe my two sunsets. Now theta is a slightly more tricky part. Remember theta is the angle that the sun sweeps in the sky in a span of about 11 seconds. Now assuming you do this experiment at the beach somewhere on the equator and the day is the day of equinox when day and night are both equal. Now I know what you're thinking. Most of us do not live on the equator and most of us would not be able to go to a beach on the day of the equinox to watch two sunsets, let alone on the equator. Bear with me for a second. I'm going to come back to this point shortly, but for now, let's move forward. So as the Earth rotates about its axis, we see the sun rise and then the sun set. So from our vantage point, the sun is basically covering one gigantic circle every day. It's covering 360 degrees in a span of about 24 hours. So in 24 hours, the sun covers 360 degrees going around the sky as seen by the earth. If it does that in one second, how much angle has the sun swept? In one second, the sun has swept 360 degrees divided by 24 hours, each hour has 60 minutes, each minute has 60 seconds. So basically, about 1 by 240 degrees is what the sun sweeps in one second. And what we want to find out is the angle that the sun swept between the two sunsets, which took about 11 seconds. So if the sun swept these many degrees every second, in 11 seconds, the sun is going to be sweeping about 11 by 240 degrees. And there you go. We have an estimate for the angle between our two sunsets. Back in my high school days, when I did a lot of amateur astronomy, I would remember this result as saying that the sun basically sweeps about one degree every four minutes in the sky. So there's no surprise that in about 11 seconds, the sun sweeps quite a small angle. And now we know quantitatively what that angle really is. And once we know theta, we can very easily find out the tan of that angle theta. I just took this number, plugged it into a calculator, and I got an answer. Comes out to be approximately 0 0.0008. And the square of the tan of this angle, 
comes out to be approximately 6.4 times 10 to the negative 7. Putting it all together finally, we can approximate our estimate for the Earth's radius to be twice the height, in this case 1.7 meters, divided by square of the tan of the angle that the sun swept, which we found out to be about 6.4 10 to the minus 7 meters. Plug in the numbers and what you would find is that this r, the radius of the earth, comes out to be about 5.3 times 10 to the 6 meters, which is basically 5300 kilometers. So, we have an estimate for the earth's radius, but how accurate are we? Let's ask the internet. I'm going to go over to Google and I'm going to search for the radius of the earth in kilometers. It's about 6,300 kilometers. Hey, we got 5,300 kilometers. Correct order of magnitude within 20% of the accepted value. Not bad at all for a chill day on the beach, eh? This method was first suggested by Dennis Rollins of San Diego, California, who published a 1979 paper in the American Journal of Physics titled Doubling Your Sunsets or how anyone can measure the Earth's size using a wristwatch and meter stick. Very apt title indeed. Now I assumed earlier that we did this measurement at a location on the equator and on the day of the equinox. But what if we are at a different place on a different day? You'll then have to account for the fact that on other latitudes, the sun does not set vertically and that on other days, the path that the sun traces in the sky, that big circle, is shifted from the east-west line. I encourage you, my beloved viewers, to think about this and try and come up with a simple correction to the result that we derived to see if you can account for this. Let me know in the comments below. There are two important takeaways over here. One, this result works for any height and not just my 1.7 meters. A taller person will see a longer time between the two sunsets and therefore will have a larger angle theta keeping R fixed. That is the universality of mathematical connections. Secondly, 20% may not seem as impressive, but think about it. Just by using very simple measurements like your height and the time interval between two sunsets, we were able to estimate something so different like the Earth's radius. You can improve upon this measurement by further taking into account effects of atmospheric refraction and also observing multiple such sunsets from higher vantage points. Give it a shot. I want to leave you with some perspective. Even simple models and approximations can give reasonable estimates for how the world around us operates. It's the power of physics and mathematics. What we just did was a fun back of the envelope style calculation and there will be more on this channel. For instance, did you know that legend says famous physicist Enrico Fermi would ask during a PhD defense to estimate the number of piano tuners in New York City? How do you even begin to estimate something so esoteric? Or how about this? Can you deduce the volume of a gas tank of a Boeing 747 based on nothing but the price of a long-haul airline ticket. Check out this video where we talk about this and give guesstimates for this and more. Anyway, next time you're on the beach, don't pack up so quickly after the sunset. Hang back a few more seconds, scribble a few equations and find out the radius of the earth. Take care and I'll see you next time.